Okay, grade eight, this is your 6.4 answers to the questions from the book. We're going to start here at question four, which are pretty easy. It says express each improper fraction as a mixed number. So the first one is really 11 thirds. And if we think about a th what a third would be, this is a third. If I had 11 of them, that would be one, that would be two, that would be three. I would need to fill four and a five and a six, and that's six thirds. That's seven thirds and eight thirds and nine thirds. That would be ten thirds. That would be eleven thirds. So if you think about what eleven thirds look like, it's really three and two thirds. So the answer is three and two thirds. If I had seventeen sixths, so we gotta cut it into six this time. One, two, three, four, five. So it's a six, one six, two six, three six, four six, five six, six sixths would make one. 12 6, 12 6 would make 2, so 17 6 would be 2, there's 13, 14, 15, 16, so 13 6, 14 6, 15 6, 16 6, 17 6, that would be 2 and 5 6, so the answer for what 17 6 is a mixed fraction, it's 2 and 5 6, for 2 and 20, or 25 halves, how many twos are there in 25 is really the question you want to ask. There are 12 of them. That would be 12 holes with one half left over. So 12 and a half is 25 halves. And the last one, eight fifths. If I have one, two, three, four, so one fifth, two fifths, three fifths, four fifths, five fifths, six, seven, six fifths, seven fifths. Eight fifths would be one and three fifths. Question five expressed each mixed number as an improper fraction, so four and three quarters. The easiest way to do it is simply use an algorithm because one, if we're dealing with quarters, one would be four quarters. And then if I would just infinite clone this, four holes would be actually be 16 quarters. Okay, that would be this four. So this four really represents one, two, three, four, which is 16 quarters. So 16 quarters plus an additional 3 quarters is 19 quarters. So the answer as an improper fraction is 19 quarters. However, there is an easier way to do this. Here's what you do. You can simply take your 4, your denominator, and multiply it by the whole number. That gives you 16, which is 16 quarters, plus an additional 3 quarters. So you get the same answer, 19 quarters, but you just use basically an algorithm rather than draw them all in. Okay? So your answer is 19 quarters. For here, 2 times 8 is 16. 16 plus 7 is 23. So your answer is 23 eighths. 3 times 6 is 18. Plus 1 is 19. So 19 thirds. And finally, 7 times 3 is 21. Plus 4 is 25. Why would I write 24? 25. 7 your answers for the next one four. Question six says use a model to determine each product. Well we're gonna just do I'm only gonna do oh let's just do B and C. So for B we have two. So the distance from here to here is gonna be two. The distance from here to here will be a half. The distance from here to here will be one. The distance from here to here will be three fifths. So basically, what we're doing is, if I was to calculate the area of this green rectangle right here, I was to move this green rectangle over here. The, the whole area inside would be the product of two and a half by one and three fifths. But what we're doing over here in the red is we're breaking this up into sections. And rather than calculate the whole area, we're calculating four different parts, and then we're adding them together to get the same area as the green. So instead of multiplying two and a half by one and three fifths, we're going to do it in four different parts. So right in here, this rectangle right here would be the product of one by two. This rectangle right here would be three fifths times two. This would be uh, one half 
times 1. And this distance right here is 1 half times 3 fifths. So if I do all those individually and then add them up, that will be the same answer as what the product over here was of all of them together. So 1 times 2 is 2. A half times 1, well, anything times 1 is a half. 3 fifths times 2, if I have 3 fifths and I multiply it by 2, I'd have 6 fifths, which is 1 and 1 fifth. And 1 half times 3 fifths, so I use my algorithm, 1 times 3 over 2 times 5, I get 3 tenths. So what I've basically done is I found smaller areas that make up the bigger one. And if I add all these together, so 2 plus 1 and 1 fifth plus 1 half plus 3 tenths, all of those together will equal the area of 2 and a half times 1 and 1 third. So the first thing I'm going to do is say, you know what, I'm going to put these whole numbers down here. So 2 plus 1 is 3. I'm going to keep that down here and just focus on the addition of these fractions. And when I add those four fractions together, what I want to do is get a common denominator. In this case, I'm going to use 10. And I'm going to create equivalent fractions that are the same value. So 1 fifth and 2 tenths are the same. 1 half and 5 tenths are the same. And 3. So then once I have common denominator, I simply add the numerators. So 2 plus 5 plus 3 is 10. Keep the denominator. 10 over 10 is actually 1. So really, these fractions add up to be 1. These whole numbers add up to be 3. So 3 plus 1 is going to be the area. My answer is going to be 4. Okay? So if I go back and look at that question again, 2 and 1 half times 2 and 1 half times 1 and 3 fifths. If I was to check it using an algorithm, I'm going to change these to improper. So 2 and a half is really 5 halves multiplied by 8 fifths. Uh, multiply the numerators, so 5 times 8. Multiply the denominators, 2 times 5. I'm going to get 40 over 10, which is 4. Same answer. Okay. And the last one we're going to do there is 1 and 1 third times 1 and 1 half. Let's do it on the other page. 1 and 1 third times 1 and 1 half. Use my area model. This distance from here to here will be 1. This distance from here to here will be a 1 third. From here to here will be 1, and this will be 1 half. So the products inside each will be 1 times 1, which is 1. 1 times a third, which is a third. 1 times a half, which is a half, and a third times a half, which is a sixth. Right, so then to get the area of the whole shape, I'll go 1 plus a third plus a half plus a sixth. To keep my whole number here, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to add these fraction parts. The common denominator will be 6. Two sixths and one third are the same fraction. Three sixths and one half are the same fraction. And one sixth and one sixth are the same. Two thirds, or two sixths plus three sixths plus one sixth is six sixths, which is one. So one plus one, because all of this makes up one, my area is going to be two. I'm going to check my answer. So I'm going to go back over here. If I check this as an improper fraction, I'm going to have four thirds multiplied by three halves. That's going to give me 12 sixths, which is, wait for it, 12 sixths is really two. Question 18, we don't need to estimate, just calculate. Use my algorithm, so 4 times 10 over 5 times 7, that would be 40 over 35, which is 1, 5 thirty-fifths, which in lowest terms, because both numerator and denominator can be divided by 5, is 1 and 1 seventh. Now for the next one, B, you have to multiply a mixed fraction by a whole number. And in this case, it's sometimes easier to think of 5 as being 5 over 1 instead. And instead of using 3 and 3 quarters, we're going to use 15 quarters. So what I've written in red is much easier to do than it is above. So this way, I'm just going to multiply my numerator. So 15 times 5 is 75. 1 times 4 is 4. How many 4s in 75? There are 18 of them. 18 times 4 is 36, 72. With 3 quarters left over. 
your answer is 18 and three quarters. And your last one, I'm going to convert both of them to improper, which is 11 fifths multiply by 5 thirds, multiply my numerators, multiply my denominators. I get 55 fifteenths. Oops. 55 fifteenths, which is uh, 3, that's 45, and 10 fifteenths, which in lowest terms is 3 and two-thirds. Question 10 says, two and a half laps of a running track equals one kilometer. How many laps equals three kilometers? So if two and a half, half laps is uh, one kilometer, so I'm going to take two and a half and multiply it by three to see how many laps that's going to be. Right? Because every kilometer is two and a half laps, so three kilometers would be two and a half times three. So that's five halves multiplied by three. But remember, when we have a whole number, we want to use it as over one. Multiply my numerators and my denominators, and I get 15 over two, which is seven and a half. Therefore, uh, seven and a half laps is three kilometers. Question 11. The Earth turns on its axis once every 24 hours. How many hours does it take to complete two and a quarter turns? So, one hour would be one turn. So, two and a quarter turns would be two and a quarter multiplied by 24. Right? Because one times 24 would be one turn. So two and a quarter turns would be this. So think of this as being 9 quarters multiplied by 24 over 1. Ooh, this, is a, this is a little bit tricky. 9 times 24. Well, 9 times 20 is 180. 9 times 4 is 36. So that's 216 over 4. We're going to multiply the numerators there to get 216. Denominators, 4. Uh, there are 54 over 1 would be in lowest terms, or 54. So therefore, it takes 54 hours to rotate 2 and a quarter turns. Okay. And then question 12. On a day in what on a day in Winnipeg with Ten and a half hours of daylight. It was sunny for a third of that time. So a third of the ten and a half hours was sunny. A third of the ten and a half hours was sunny. So a third of ten and a half is going to be what we do. So we really have a fraction multiplied by a mixed fraction. Same type of thing. The third multiplied by change this to improper. Multiply your numerators. Multiply your denominators. You get 21 over 6, which is 3. That's 18. And 3 sixths, which is 3 and a half. So how many hours was it sunny? Therefore, it was sunny for 3 and a half hours. Okay, I think that's the end of your homework. No, one more. So, Andreas has $18, Bonnie has one and two-thirds times as much as Andreas, and Cheryl has that much more as Bonnie. How much money do they have all together? So, what I'm going to do is write A, B, and C for Andrea, Bonnie, and Cheryl. So, Andrea's easy. She has 18 bucks, But Bonnie has one and two-thirds times as many. So, 18 over 1 multiplied by 5 over 3, because that's what 1 and 2 thirds is, as an improper fraction. Uh, that's going to be 90 over 3, which is simply 30. So if Andrea has $18, Cheryl has $30. And if Cheryl has $30, Cheryl has 1 and 3 fifths times as much as Bonnie has. So you're going to take this amount and multiply it by 1 and 3 fifths, which is going to be 30 over 1 for 30, multiplied by 8 fifths, 
that's 240 over 5, which is 48. So how much do they have all together? Well, in this case, you're going to have to take $18, which is Andrea's, plus $30, which is Bonnie's, plus $48, which is Cheryl's, and all together you have $96. And that's great. Okay, sorry, Denise, I didn't give you the other answer. There's no time for it, but we will go over the other enrichment questions tomorrow. If you have any questions, please make sure you ask.